Roll 20 Furry Apocalypse, posted by user Take Me to Fat Mandu. A couple years ago, I was looking for a new campaign to play on Roll 20, as my last one had come to an end. A guy I used to play with messaged me and asked if I wanted to join in his game. He told me the system he was using and explained that it was a post apocalyptic style game similar to Metro 2033, but the characters are all animals as humans have died out, and he's using a homebrew system. Uh, look, you know this isn't. You, you guys know the title. You know this is going to involve uh. furries. You know this isn't going to be good. Let's just keep going with this. So. I think it sounds cool, so I go through. How does he think this sounds cool? It's first thing I'd be thinking is red flag, red flag, red well, flag. I don't think he knows that this guy's a furry. All the characters are animals. As humans have died out. That's a huge red flag to me. Alright, well, to us maybe, to us maybe, but. Okay. I think it sounds cool. So I go through character generation with him and make myself a badger, similar to the badger lords from the Red Wall books. He tells me that the station that the badgers lived in has collapsed, so I might be the last one alive. He sends me a copy of his rules and I have a look over them in preparation, which in hindsight, I should have looked at more thoroughly. <laughs> yeah. The first session comes around and I get introduced to the other players and their characters, who are playing a dog a crocodile and an otter. Everything goes well and the world actually seems really interesting. About three hours into the session something happens that makes me regret joining this game. Oh dear. <laughs> I wonder oh what this dear. Could be. <laughs> I get into a heated discussion with the croc because he was being a bit of a dick when he asked the GM if he can roll for seduction. My reaction is, what the fuck? And he feels, thankfully. Seeing that his role had failed, he asks if he can roll oh, for God. grapple. No, this is not. You know where this is going. You can't. You go for his option. Oh. Well, grapple it is then. Oh. <laughs> Seduction by force. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Is that what we're going to call it now? Because you can't say what it actually is. Yeah. You know what YouTube's like. He asks if he can roll for grapple, and the GM excitedly tells him that he's welcome to. And that roll succeeds. And my defense roll fails. And the GM describes him wrestling me to the ground. Now the part that made me nope out of that game happened. The croc said he wanted to roll for sex. Nice. I screamed, what the fuck are you doing? I didn't sign up for this. He rolls. He succeeds. And the GM vividly and breathlessly <sighs> describes a giant crocodile raping my badger whilst clearly turned on himself. I'm sorry, but see the DM at this point. I'm going to assume, because it's on low 20, low over Discord. See if the cop or the DM oh, is going to... <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that deep-ass, horrible bleeding. Oh, God, I can, I can imagine, I can picture yeah. it. Oh, right, keep going. Let's, let, let, let's just keep going. I'm in shock. I get into an argument with the GM that this isn't acceptable and I'm leaving the game there and then. He tells me it was in the rules he sent me, and I must have missed it. I didn't mind playing a furry game. I'm in no way a furry, but I don't judge anyone he is. But the root play was not something I'd ever sign up for. TLDR. Joined a game on Roll20 run by a GM I'd played with before. Characters were animals. GM vividly describes the rape of my badger by Crocodile. Well, look, that was a very short one, but... Like, this is one of those prime examples where you have to really stop and think. You know, I, we always get, whenever we do, like, videos about furries and stuff like that. Why always, do you hate them so much? Right? Yeah, like, you know, there's a lot of people, and I can understand why, like, you know, oh, you shouldn't paint them all with the same blush, you know. No, but it that. will. <laughs> but, yeah, but the problem is, this, this thing is just so common. It's just so common that I refuse to believe that it's not hyper common. You know what I mean? Like, it just happens all the time, and what, what do you do and put this into the rules? And let's be honest, you know fine likely that DM is heavy breathing the entire way through, like, you know, so please is not actually low and nice, it... <sighs> oh, no, look, next story. Let's get, let, look, the next one's bad as well, but that's a nice teaster. Let's get into this next one, will we? Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video, but today's sponsor is Coinbase. Have you been thinking about getting into cryptocurrency recently with everything that's going on? Well, maybe now would be a good time to get into cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum or Litecoin. Well, why not consider using Coinbase? It's a great all-in-one platform to buy and sell cryptocurrencies. And one of the features that I think is pretty based is being able to set up a recurring purchase be it every day, every week or a month. It makes it much easier to slowly invest into crypto. 
And also being able to set up alerts when a cryptocurrency goes over a set amount makes it far easier to cash out big time. We've all seen the videos of, you know, the yeah. uh, sell, 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 sell. <laughs> yeah, you know. getting the alerts really help. And best of all, you will receive 10 US dollars of Bitcoin when you buy or sell 100 US dollars or more on Coinbase. Also, we get a tenner, you get a tenner, and then if you invite any of your friends, you also get another tenner. So, look, win-win. So what are you waiting for? If there's ever been a time to start getting into crypto and making a quick buck, now is the time. So quick, go check out the top link down below and get the invite and get yourself a tenner and get yourself into that cryptocurrencies. Now let's get back to the video. Incestuous Furries, posted by user DMs Diablo. This was close to four years ago, so I might be forgetting a few details. My group at the time was playing Final Fantasy D6 RPG at the time. Fairly good system in itself. Our group consisted of Furry1. We're going to call him F1 for the sake of it, as a lancer. Furry 2. We're going to call him F2, as a warrior. Moogle Time Mage. Cause havoc on his own, but in a more enjoyable way. An android engineer, he had a habit of never actually helping the party. And me, as a red mage. F1 and F2 were close friends at the time, and decided that they would make a pair of wolf folk, who were the last of their kind and brother and sister. Why is it always the last of their kind when it comes to this? Ugh. And brother and sister. I know. Pornhub's leaking out into reality here. <laughs> it is. This resulted in more than half of our first session with them attempting to roleplay the fact they were going to start propagating their species in the campsite and ignoring the fade to black comment by the GM <laughs> three times now. <laughs> Normally I could care less what another player would be doing as long as it doesn't affect my character. That is until they start calling each other Misa and Nisa, their characters' names, in as high-pitched oh. moaning noises every few minutes when talking to each other. Please oh, don't Christ. Oh, my God. You know the worst thing is? It, like, you, you have to just imagine these people, though. It's like you have to imagine. I don't want to imagine them. Why are you just doing this? This Why? went on for two hours during a more role-play part of the session. And it eventually got to the point I was agreeing to anything the GM was saying, simply to get into travelling time for the first combat encounter, Easy Pie Two Wolves. Can any of you guys explain to me what two... No, I don't want to know what it is, but why Easy Pie Two Wolves? It sounds like two girls, one cup. It does sound like two girls, one cup. It does sound like... One man, one, one screwdriver. Those... Yeah, it one sounds man, like, one you know, jar. You know, like, that, them great noddies, like, gore Blue videos. Waffle. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, the horrible gore videos that were after all on the internet a few years back. Oh, actually, 10 years ago. Jesus, that makes me feel old. A few years back. I was about to go, mm, James, it's 2020, a few years back. Yeah, I'm talking about, like, 2006. Yeah. Well, look, if any of you guys want to... No, don't. This, no, don't. Right, this story will play, tell us anyway. Yeah. Let's keep going. Somehow this turned into a 30-minute discussion started by F1 on what will happen if his character is pregnant, resulting in minor arguing with the GM and F1 and F2 asking it to come down to a nightly random roll. A Was nightly random roll role? to make sure if to see if they, they're, they're pregnant, pregnant every night. Oh, God, oh my god. Okay, like, sure. Oh. Why? But back to the combat. First wolf goes down fairly straightforward. Second one seems to have more than half attacks against it miss. I decide to waste one of my spells as it's no attack roll to kill it in one shot. This for some reason triggers F1 into calling me a glory hog and stealing his kill. Frankly, if I had been smarter I would have left there, over the outcome of the next two hours. The GM managed to defuse the situation before it escalated, and we continued on our way. My character decided on his travels, he would start reading a book. A few perception rolls later by the rest of the players. I roll somewhat bad and don't notice anything for some reason. This earned a snicker from F1. I really can't stand that whenever I come across that stuff. <laughs> yeah. See when people are like trying to like trying to do something, but they're obvious like they're so like over the top about it. Or like do you do it. something and, and like, you do some you do something and the table's quiet and all you hear is <laughs> Yeah, oh it's like I, what's that <laughs> for? <laughs> I know I I that honestly. Oh. The rest of the group notices a bear cub minding its own business in a nearby field, with a necklace and container around its neck. This will not end well. Oh, Jesus, not a child. Not a child. Leave the child alone. <laughs> I am informed by the Moogle of the bear, and I basically wave it off as it's not my problem to harass wildlife. 
F1 being the murder hobo he is, followed by the android and Moogle all say, we should just kill it and get ready to attack. I inform them, if I plan on going after a bear cub, I won't be part of it. They charge in blindly, and within one round, F1 is at half health. Good. Good. <laughs> round two comes, and things are only getting progressively worse. As I just read my book, nearby, knowing it won't end well, and I have no desire to steal any more glory. By the end of this round, the Moogle Time Mage has burnt through most of his MP, and dealt considerable damage to the bear cub. Round 3 comes along and now I'm being asked for help by F1 and being called a coward for not helping kill the bear cub after about 40 minutes, eventually leading to I will kill your character in his sleep if you don't help. Um, no. no. That's, uh, that's it's your choice to go do it? No, deal with it yourself. See, no? No. Okay, we'll, 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 we'll guard about this guy after the story, so we'll... I relent just to keep the crap from getting worse but before the end of the round, F1 and the Moogle are now down from the bear cub and we hear a roar from nearby. Ew. How tempted I was just to walk away with my book at this point. <laughs> I cast one attack spell doing very little damage. Red mages don't really get much at low level. Round 4. Android goes to 1 HP and F2 gets the idea of asking the bear to stop attacking. The GM humouring the party has the bear be sentient and be able to talk. We get called a few insults by the bear before its mother shows up. And she is massive and would clearly have been a party wipe. I negotiated for the item the bear has, which turned out to just be a basic potion. And we were allowed to leave with our lives. Well... <laughs> well, F1 silently glares at me for another 20 minutes before getting up to smoke outside. The GM calls it and we leave. The game went on two more sessions and both times we all nearly died from one bad idea or another. The group removed F1 a few weeks after that and things got slightly better from there. We continue to still use Misa and Nisa as inside jokes every so often. Oh, I can't believe that. I can't believe they actually did this in front of people. Mm -hmm. Like I know. It's I, different over Rule 20 but whenever you're sitting at the table in front of people and you're going, Misa! 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 <laughs> Charger Binks out here. <laughs> TLDR. Incestuous furries roleplay incest for hours. Nearly getting party killed by attacking bear cubs. Angry over mage doing mage things. Okay. Now, I know we're going to get a lot of comments of boys guarding and being like, Oh, you're very mean to the furry community. All this. Now, yeah, we problem, are. And yeah, I couldn't... But no, no. Think about it like this. Now, now, these people are... The two furries are playing home to these, Right? At no point do they have to be brother and sister. No point. That's could, them who make that. They could be part of the same species, and that would be fine. You know, um, okay, you know, they're doing the whole sex thing. If you really want, I really think it's a way for you to just wank onto the table, personally. <laughs> However, if you it know makes what? sense to the story, go for it. I suppose, feed them back. These, but you these know what? people do not do I know. decide to do that. They and just... they decide, you know what, incest is the way to go because that's what I want. <laughs> incest is the way to go. That, that's what it is. So, like, am I you know what I, ha I had? Wrong? I remember we done a we done a um a a video about furries a while ago, right? Yeah. And in the comments, somebody's argument, right? The, oh, you're very mean to furries. No, no, listen, it's like I know four furries. Right, I know four furries personally, and only two of them are like that. And I was like, okay, I was like, I went, okay. So, from what you're saying, only half of them. Only are. half, like, so it's fifty fifty. It's yeah. a fifty fifty chance. I'm gonna find a furry, and that's only because, oh, okay. So you know four of them, and two of them are. So the other two are just very good at hiding it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was like, that doesn't, that's nothing. That, that doesn't help anything. <laughs> that's not helping your argument uh, here. <laughs> like, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure, like, to leave on a half decent note, I'm sure there is some decent furries out there. The problem is, see, when it comes to, like, all these stories we do, there's just so many examples of bad ones. Mm -hmm. I just, I've yet to, mm -hmm. I've yet to f c find one. And if any of you guys have a story, like, a really good, heartwarming, Wholesome story about a furry. We're not going to read it. <laughs> okay, that's fair Turn it there. Yeah. Well, look, hope you guys enjoyed. Remember, like, comment, subscribe, all the other good shit. See you later. Bye.